Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon. I hope you have had a fabulous few festive days. I have had a lovely chilled quiet one which has mainly involved eating, watching TV and movies and reading some lovely books. So it's been an absolute joy and I hope yours has been joyous as well. Like I said, whatever you have been up to. Anyway, I'm back with the first of two videos wrapping up December, even though this isn't a wrap up video, this is a book haul, so mildly confusing, before of course it is New Year. And for those of you who've been around a while, you will know how much I love a new year. And actually, I should just mention that, because some of you have asked, my books of 2020, that, my books of 2023 video, my favourites, will probably be going live towards the end of the first week, beginning of the second week of January. I want to have a little bit of distance between the stroke of midnight on the 31st and when I put that list together, because who knows, I could read a book in the next three and a half days that could end up being in my best books of the year. You never know. So, moving on though to today's chat, which is going to be all about the books that have arrived so far in December. I don't think many more arrived, maybe a couple pop up in the post from publishers, but I'm not planning on going to any book sales, so I thought this was a good time to wrap it all up. If any do arrive, obviously, I'll include them in my January haul. I'm going to start, as always, with books that I have mentioned on the channel before, but they've arrived in their finished forms, first of which is Day by Michael Cunningham, which I saw Nathan of Nathan's Nook talk about, and he made me all the more intrigued for this. I didn't realise it was set on the same day over, I think, a period of four or five years, and they happen to be the pandemic years, and it looks at what a family is going through during that time. This is giving me slight O. William vibes. I'm not quite sure why, but it is. I think, I don't know if it's because of that setting, or was it Lucy by the Sea? No, Lucy by the Sea, that's what it's giving me, where you look at what a family goes through during a pandemic. Anyway, very, very keen to head to this. This will be out, I think, in the next couple of weeks. A book that's out next week, and I know this for, I am reading it right now. Well, not reading it right now, because I'm filming this right now, but I'm currently reading it. And believe you me, it was quite difficult to tear myself away from this to film. It's The Storm We Made by Vanessa Chan. And this is set in the 1940s and 1930s in Malaysia. And it looks at how the Japanese come to Malaysia and what follows on from there. And we meet a character called Cecily and her son has gone missing. Lots of boys have been going missing in her village, but now her middle son has. And she believes it's because, well, it's like the world is getting revenge for something that she did 10 years ago. And we go back and find out what that is. And like I said, I am hooked by it so far. I did say there could be some books that could sneak into my best books of the year before the end of the year, and that may well be one of them, although I don't want to jinx it now because I'm not that far in. Moving on to some books from publishers, and I say some books because it's something that I need to repeat, I think, especially because I've got a little bit of a plan for next year. I mean, I've got quite a few plans for next year, but this is one that I might as well mention while we're here. In haul videos, I'm not going to mention books that come unsolicited from publishers unless they're ones that I'm really, really keen to get to. If they're ones that I'm just like, no, that's not gonna be for me, I will pass them on. And then what I'm also creating is a pile of possibility, which once a month on Patreon, on the beta readers tier, I will be going through the first sentence, paragraph and chapter of, and deciding whether or not I wanna read it, but also asking if my patrons would like me to give it a whirl or think it might be a me book. Those books have been put aside, but all of these now from publishers are one that I'm very, ones? There's certainly not one. The ones that I'm very keen to get to, starting with one of my most anticipated books of 2024, and that is The Burial Plot by Elizabeth McNeil. And this is another historical novel from Elizabeth. I've loved both of her previous novels. The Doll Factory is now on Paramount Plus, and I haven't treated myself to that yet, but I will be soon. It's one that I wanted to wait until all the episodes were available so I could binge it. I don't know much about this, other than it's written by Elizabeth, so I'm desperate to read it. We did talk about it a bit in Abney Park Cemetery when she was thinking about it. And one of the reasons that we're talking about it is because I used to be a tour guide at Highgate Cemetery. So I'm really into the Magnificent Seven and that whole Victorian funereal kind of stuff. And I believe that is very much in here. So I'm really, really excited for that one. As I am this, which is The Lost Love Songs of Boise Singh by Ingrid Pissot. And I have to say, Faber are doing something brilliant where they're putting the official cover on the back of the proof. So you still know it's a proof, but you can also use it nicely on Instagram. I don't know what this is about at all. I just know that it's Ingrid's 
second novel, I absolutely loved Love After Love so much. You now when you want to be badgering an author saying, when's your next book, when's your next book, when's your next book, but you never would. That's what I've been thinking, Ingrid, if you see this. I've been thinking it regularly. I'm very, very excited for this, another of my most anticipated. And Faber also with that very kindly sent me The In Crowd by Charlotte Bassel. And this is the second of her Detective Beauchamp mysteries. Her debut The Other Half I read for an event at West Kirby Bookshop and absolutely loved. That was also when I first fell in love with Detective Beauchamp. He's not my way inclined but if he was I know he's fictional but still. Mm -mm. Anyway moving on I think this one again looks at class and popularity but I'm sure we'll also have lots of different underlying themes and I can't wait for it because also what I forgot to mention there is that the sense of humour in Charlotte Vassar's writing is absolutely just my kind of sense of humour. It sort of reminds me a bit of Kate Atkinson. So there we go. I'm very, very much looking forward to that one. Then we have the new novel. Oh, and I should say, sorry, that's out in April. Oops, that's out in April. There we go. Coming out in April also is The Household by Stacey Halls, another author I'm a huge fan of, although I have realised I haven't read her third novel yet so shame on me. I don't know what this is about but I also kind of don't really want to know what it's about and I know that's quite annoying when I do hauls if I don't go into massive detail but Stacey Halls is an author that I absolutely love so yeah I want to get to this before it comes out. Along with that this isn't a book that necessarily is one of my most anticipated but one that sounded interesting. Uh, the lovely folk ahead of Zeus also sent me Honey by Isabel Banter and this is out in the summer. It says it's 1997 and Amber Young is about to become one of the most infamous pop stars of her era and it does say it's perfect for fans of Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now I think that's kind of a well it's a brave bold statement because if you love Daisy Jones and the Six and then you compare Honey, there's going to be a lot of pressure on that book, but I will give it a whirl and see and report back in due course. Then a book that I really wanted to get and the publisher had very kindly sent me is Blessings by Chukwebuka Ibe. And this is out in February and it's about a young man coming of age, coming to terms with his sexuality in Nigeria. And I think this is going to be fascinating. As I do, another queer book Henry Henry by Alan Bratton and I believe this is a riff off one of Shakespeare's plays but set in the modern day and it's all about inheritance and it's all about passing along the line however can that be the case if the heir is queer so yeah I think that's what this is about we'll see I think it's also a bit star-crossed lovers-y Maybe. So I'm intrigued for this one. That's the vibes I've got about it. Anyway, I could be completely wrong. The Lovely Folk at Fourth Estate sent me a copy of Butter by Azako Yuzuki. And this is out on the 29th of February. It says best before 29th of February because it's designed to look like a packet of butter, although with blood all over it. And this is translated, I should say, by Polly Barton and is based on a true crime. Now, I think this came out quite a few years ago in Japan. It was an absolute bestseller. This is one of, I would say about, I was gonna say five, then I was thinking 10, and I'm now thinking maybe 20 potential first books of 2024. We shall see where the mood takes me on Monday. Very much looking forward to that when I get to it. Then a book that loads of people have been going wild about is Greta and Baldin by Rebecca K. Riley. And this is about two siblings who are both queer and are both in love with people they think maybe they shouldn't be, but also it looks at their familial situation in terms of their cultural heritage, but also just being accepted. And I think this is gonna be fab. Like literally so many people have been saying how amazing this is um, on socials. Along with that, the lovely folk at Hutchinson and Heinemann also sent me The Lagos Wife by Vanessa Waters. And this is about a woman who from the outside seems to have absolutely everything, like the best life possible, until she goes missing when she uh, is swimming off a boat. It turns out that there was a lot more going on behind the facade that she was putting out there. This sounds great. As does this non-fiction book, which is Revolutionary Acts by Jason 
fucking day and this is love and brotherhood in black gay britain i feel like that perfectly sums up what this book is going to be about and i'm uh, really keen to read this and find out more then we have now this book I don't know if this is going to be for me or not. And I couldn't quite decide. Oh, I've just not told you when these books were out, have I? I told you when Butter was out. <laughs> that was, was going to be out in February. So is Greta and Baldin. I need to get better at this next year. As is actually The Lagos Wife by Vanessa Waters. They're all out in February. This is out in March 2024. And then out in April 2024 is a book that I was saying. I can't quite work out if this is going to be me or not. But there was something about literally the two lines on the back where I was like I feel like I'm going to give this a whirl and so it's not ended up on the pile of possibility I'm going to actually just see if I pick it up and want to read it over explaining this one it is The Husbands by Holly Gramazio and on the back the two lines that got me were you wait ages for the one dot 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 then 203 come along at once and I just thought that sounded really intriguing so very intrigued for that one i will say and then we have mrs gulliver by valerie martin i absolutely loved property which is valerie martin's women's prize winning novel but i think i loved even more mary riley which is a novel told from the perspective of the housekeeper of dr jekyll i will just leave you with that i don't know what this is about i don't care i just want to go into it and uh, read it and I'm excited that she's got a new one and I think mum will be quite excited by this. I have to say that I have got a few other of Valerie's books on my shelves and I haven't got to them yet so naughty me but yeah this one definitely keen to read soon. This book really intrigued me. It's got the sort of premise, what, what do you call it? it's not even a blur but the teaser let's say wrapped around it and it says west is 20 years in the past east is 20 years in the future would you travel through time to save the one you love and it is the other valley by scott alexander howard no you can see that there i will say this goes against what i was saying about how it's really great when you've got a proof that looks like the finished copy of the book because that is a very clever marketing thing well done atlantic and it's about a place where you have the future and the past literally on either side of the town and I just think that sounds so intriguing and I'll be really interested to see how Scott Alexander Howard pulls this off. Then we have a finished copy of, I hate the fact that I go, then we have, I'm editing these videos back and I always want to cut out but then, next, following on from that, we have Glorious Exploits, a finished copy by Ferdia Lennon. I think this is out in either January or February. I'm probably going to read it in May because it's set in Sicily and I'm going to Sicily in May. This is about two potters when Sicily gets invaded and what follows on from there. And I think this will be fab. And I know that my mum already liked this and I'll be in Sicily with my mum, so I'll be able to pass it over to her and she can enjoy it too. Then we have the latest novel from Erin Kelly. This is The House of Mirrors that's out in April. I haven't read an Erin Kelly for a while. Shame on me, I should have, because I do really enjoy her thrills. I think this is a follow-up to one of her previous novels. So that's going to be quite an interesting sort of, Thing. That didn't sound very interesting then, did it? That was me not sounding interesting, not the book. And we also have a book that might not necessarily be by an author you would associate with me, and I would probably agree with you, until I heard the blurb of this book, which is about a servant who has magical abilities and is trying to keep them hidden. And it's The Familiar by Leigh Bardugo, which is out also in April. April is going to be an absolutely banging month for books. Look at that cover as well. That's banging. Now, on to gifts before we head to books that I've bought myself. I am not an easy person to buy books for. However, Kate at Harrison Harris did super duper well, especially because she picked two books that are in a, it's not a genre really, but are in a trope, I guess, that I really like in fiction. What do I mean? They're just something that if... <laughs> This setting is something that really works for me in fiction as a general rule, and that is a shared apartment building. And she got me two books that match that as a setting. Anyway, what are the books, Simon? Move on. The first is The Yucubian Building by Alal Al Aswani, which I think my gran was a really big fan of this. And also, I should say it's an apartment block set in Egypt. 
And then we also have an apartment block in Paris. And this is The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barbary. And this is one that I'm kind of surprised that I haven't read because I remember it being so big. But also it reminds me of my grand, not just because I think she really enjoyed it, but because my grand collected hedgehogs and I now have that collection of hedgehogs downstairs because I inherited it after she died. And um, yeah, I'd always meant to read this and talk to her about it, but didn't. So um, yeah, we'll see how I got on with these. But thanks very much to you, Kate at Harrison Harris for those. Three books that Chris got me because we went to West Kirby Bookshop to pick up Jordan Dan before we had them round for dinner the other week. And I had said that I didn't want anything for Christmas and was being quite a difficult uh, person for Christmas gifts. These three I spotted and I was like, oh, two of them I seen and sort of fancied and one of them I'd nearly bought myself. The two that I'd seen and sort of fancied were The Love of Singular Men by Victor Herringer, which is translated by James Young and is set in the 1970s in Brazil and is a queer tale. That's all I needed to know to want to read it. The other one is Kelly Link's White Cat Black Dog, which is a fantastical selection of short stories. I do have one of Kelly Link's books on my shelves and one thing I want to try and get better at next year is not buying a book by an author I haven't read yet. It's the latest book that I'm really excited about until I've read what I've got on the shelves. Well, that sounded way more complicated than I meant it to. That's the theme today. I just love that cover. And then the other one that I had nearly bought when I was with Mum in London in October, November, was Every Drop is a Man's Nightmare by Megan Kamale Kakimoto. And these are stories that are set in, well, this sensational debut story collection follows a cast of mixed native Hawaiian and Japanese women through a contemporary landscape thick with inherited wisdom and the ghosts of colonisation. And the cover totally got me, but I just thought that sounded like a really interesting mixture of stories and stories and voices that I would like to hear more about. And so we have that. Then on two books that have come from my wish list. I have a wish list. It's always linked down below. It's where I have a list of books that I can't get in any indie or high street bookshops in the UK. So therefore, I think that's all right. That's my thoughts on it. Anyway, it's down below if you're interested. First up from the lovely Linda Bennywith, we have Lush Lies by J. Vanessa Lyon. This is the second of the books from Roxanne Gay's publishing house. And I really enjoyed the first one, the name of which always escapes me. And I'll try to remember to pop down here because it was really, really great. I'm intrigued to see any book that Roxanne Gay picks to be published. Well, that's almost a tongue twister. This is the next one. So looking forward to getting to that. And of course, thank you very much, Linda. Then the lovely Tennessee. Very kind of got me not one, but two books. The first of which is Eden Glassy by Melissa Lukashenko, which is a book that has been doing amazing things in Australia. Melissa Lukashenko is um, a really well-known author out there. And then we also have a short story collection. Oh, oh no, I've knocked you over. One second, everybody. There we go. I hope you're all right. A short story collection that I have been wanting to get my mitts on for ages, and it's Sing With Me at the Edge of Paradise by Joe Borman. And this is told from the perspective of several different gay men of different ages, different walks of life at pivotal points in their lives. And I think this is gonna be really, really, really interesting. Then we have from the lovely Jane, the Last Animal by Ramona Orsbell. I've got quite a few of her books on my shelves and she is an author that I definitely, definitely need to read. Well, at least, I'm gonna say two of her books next year. That would be a win for me. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. We'll talk about my plans for 2024 in 2024. It's definitely one that I have been wanting to get to because I've heard amazing things about it, but also because it's by Ramona Orsbell who I have a lot of books on my imported shelves. But they're not there, that's my non-fiction shelves. They're there, my imported shelves, and some here. Anyway, there we go. If you ever want to see a tour of my bookshelves, do um, check out, I feel like this is plugging it again, but on my Patreon, I do my sorting the shelves and my book trolley every month. And there will be one coming, which is a bit of a sort, but also gives you an idea of what I'm planning on doing with my shelves next year. And last but not least, in terms of books that were gifted to me before we head on to books that I kindly gifted myself from me to me is one that the lovely folk at the World Museum in Liverpool gave me when I when they invited me to go and see this 
well, the author of this book, Talk, and it's Emperor of Rome by Mary Beard, and I love Mary Beard, possibly not as much as my mum loves Mary Beard, or as much as my sister Mim loves Mary Beard, for they are both classicists, and so is Mary Beard. How many times can I say Mary Beard? Mary Beard, Mary Beard, Mary Beard. She's hit now. This sounds really interesting. I have to admit, she said something in her talks that really made me think, mm, that's how I felt about this book, because Emperor of Rome could really put you off. What, I want to read a whole big chunky book about one emperor, but it's not. It's about that role, and also not only seen through the eyes of sort of them, but all the people around them. And when she started talking about all the different people that was and all the different sort of stories not all of them obviously because she wanted you to read the book when she gave you like a teaser or two or three it just really got me and I was like yeah this sounds like the kind of book I'd love and um, may well be presents for two people that I just mentioned because I got mine signed and there's oh I've given too much away I mean actually to be fair my mum doesn't watch my channel my little sister does she says she watches it when she misses me are you missing me now Miriam probably not you're probably embarrassed and furious anyway on to the books as I mentioned that I have gifted to me from me much love Simon kiss 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 and the first two are books that I've got from World of Books which I've been trying out recently ever since I saw the fabulous Nikel's Nook talk about them and they are a online second-hand bookstore where the authors do get some money and also it's a really nice way of getting second-hand books to have second lives. That said, I will say the description of, or what they see as very good, is possibly not what I see as very good because both of these were very good slash excellent and I would say they were all right. Anyway, moving on. This is Last Night at the Lobster by Stuart O'Nan, which I had never heard of until mum started talking about it after some viewers of her channel said that she should try this author out and this book particularly as he is meant to be an American voice of the working class. So that really intrigued me. I have read it, I have thoughts, I will tell you about them on Sunday. I have been reading my, well, I've completed it now because I finished it on Christmas Day, my short story advent calendar. And I won't give any spoilers away, but there are a few authors that I have bought, that I read short stories by and then wanted to read more of. One of those was Leopoldine Court, and this is when watched her debut short story collection. This cover is filthy and absolutely battered, but apparently very good. I'm gonna judge the book, not on that, but what's inside it. And the short story that I read by her, I thought was really, really great. And so I'm intrigued with that. I also think that is a really, really nice cover. Let's not have it too closely, because stain it. Moving on to other books I bought myself. Now the first two, I think I may have bought one in October and one in November, but I was holding off because they were potential crime time picks. However, I saw Pip and we went to Panto and we have decided that crime time is going to very much change next year. And it's going to be, I was going to say sporadic. It has been ridiculously sporadic over the last few years. But what we're going to do is just catch up about the crime novels that we've read and enjoyed, or maybe even not enjoyed, every so often throughout the year and make it much more relaxed. It's not going to be focused on one book that we get people to read that we have to read by a certain date and then both our diaries don't quite work. And <gasps> that. Two that um, I bought us both copies of, and I can say this now as well because I'd wrapped them and Pip opened them on Christmas Day. The first of which anyway is The Crossing Places by Ellie Griffiths, who I've heard amazing things about, and I think this is the first in the Ruth Galloway series of books. I really love this cover. I'm hoping they've redone all the covers like this one, because if it's just one of them that looks like this and the others all look really different, that always really miffs me off with publishers, but that's a whole different thing. Oh God, I'm ripping everything again. One second. The other one is The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell, which sounds like basically The Great British Bake Off with murder. Interested. On a crime theme though, this was a surprise to me that I wanted to read this, so I don't know if this will therefore also be a surprise to you. Maybe it won't be. I had really bad insomnia the other week. Well, I've had it on and off, but there was one particularly bad night where I had to get up at three. And so I watched the two Tom Cruise, Jack Reacher movies, and then started to watch the new, well, not the new series, but like the first series on Prime. I was like, no, I need to read the books first. And so I picked up Lee Child's Killing Floor, which introduces Jack Reacher and I'm going to read this before I carry on watching the show. On to a selection of books that I got when I was book selling at Harris and Harris uh, with the aforementioned Kate and of course book selling how could I not 
also do book buying when I was in a bookshop for 48 hours. The first one um, that I got was Everything We Are by Karen Angelico. I made a video with Kate where she talked about this, which is one of the reasons I ended up buying it. And I will link that down below so that you have to go and see why, because her response to it was brilliant so we've got that. I picked up Grim Expectations by Alice Bell because I took a picture of this, pop, well not of this specific book sorry, I took a picture of one of the book displays in Harris and Harris and a guy called Harry who I was at the same school at and actually was taught by my mum messaged me and said oh my goodness that's my sister's book and so I was like well I can't leave without it then can I? So I didn't. Don't think this is a riff on Great Expectations. I think it's a big house murder mystery and that should be something very much up my street. I also picked up one of the books that mum was recommending. So Kate asked me and my mum to each have a selection of books that we would like to really hand sell to people. And this is an author that mum has mentioned a lot on her channel and I've still not read. And so I was like, right, I'm gonna get it. It's The Golden Legend by Nadim Aslam. I have no idea what this is about, even though mum has talked about it. Really sorry, mum, but you're probably not watching this anyway. <laughs> but I am definitely going to get to him next year, just cause so I can see what all the fuss is about. She's definitely read one in the last year on her channel, but I think she talked about a few in different videos and she really really loves him so I'm gonna give him a whirl. Speaking of my mother we have a mutual favourite author which is Rose Tremaine and I saw this gorgeous edition of a Rose Tremaine book that I hadn't heard of which is one of her short story collections Evangelista's Plan and so I was like right I want to get that. I nearly bought two but I did show mild restraint. I think that deserves me a round of applause, everyone, for that mild restraint. Thank you very much. Last but not least, from Harrison Harris Books, but not the last of the books that I bought myself in December, we have Super Infinite by Catherine Rundell, which is The Transformations of John Donne. I just think she's writing such varied books about well, also not just like varied in terms of subject matter, but some of them are fiction, non-fiction for different age groups. I want to go on a bit of a Rundle readathon at some point next year. Or maybe actually, let's say, I'm going to sprinkle a Rundle readathon throughout next year. That's probably a better way of looking at it. And this shouldn't be my cup of tea because I'm kind of like John Dunn. Am I even really interested? But I just feel like, written by Catherine, I'll love it. So we shall see in due course whether that turns out to be true. Two books I bought, I think, in Foils in Birmingham. The first of which had been recommended to me by, I want to get this right, I think it was Victoria. I hope it was Victoria. Victoria, if you're watching, or if you're not called Victoria, but you're watching and you recommended me this book, please comment down below. She recommended when we were at Harris and Harris a book that wasn't on the shelves, but I clocked in my brain. And it's I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman, which is about a group of women who are kept in a cage. And there's a young girl in there who everyone kind of just, well, sort of gazes over I think but she is going to be the key to changing everything and that sounded amazing. I also picked up this poetry collection which was inspired both by seeing someone and this happens weirdly sometimes doesn't it where you've read a book on a certain subject matter that just kind of takes up your almost like every waking moment. It's really rare when that happens with a book but it does sometimes and it happened to me with a book I read earlier this month and we'll be talking about on Sunday but I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's set during the AIDS crisis in the 80s and then I was thinking oh I'd like to read more around that time period and it just so happened that I also saw on Instagram. Now I'm going to get this wrong because it's one of those accounts where it's not the name it's like ODIS94 or something but really really like their Instagram. I'll try to remember to link it down below. They'd read this poetry collection I think on World AIDS Day and were raving about it and so I decided I wanted to get it. Sorry you can't really see it because of the light. This is Tom Gunn's The Man With Night Sweats and I think this is going to be really emotional and I would like to get to that soon. Another book that I bought and I think this was in Chester. Now I know it was in Chester it's when I'd gone for a meeting at Story House and we'll talk about more about Story House next year, I promise. If you want to know more about my job, that is. That was very um, assumptious of me. Assumptious? Anyway, <laughs> I'd put this book on order to pick up then. And it's one that one of my patrons, Rachel, had raved about on her Instagram. Um, it's The Rabbits by Sophie Over. I hadn't heard of this at all. This is a family drama set in, now is it Sydney? 
or is it Brisbane during a heat wave and it's got magical realism in it and I would like to read a lot more Australian fiction. I have plenty so did I really need this one? No but I was completely sold on it and also Rachel has a great taste in books and so I was like oh I've not heard of that I want to give it a whirl and so I picked it up so I think this will be a book that I read very early next year. I wanted to squeeze this one in before the end of the year but I just don't think that's going to happen. So there we go. Whew. That is my December book haul. I would love to know in the comments down below what books you got for Christmas, if you got any, and what books you're thinking of purchasing, either with any book tokens you got or just in the sales, which I'm avoiding. And as always, if you've read any of these and you didn't like them, don't tell me that now because I'm really excited about them. And so, yeah, I, I just don't want that. I don't want anyone pissing on my Christmas cake there said it and it would even though I don't think there's a crumb of Christmas cake left in this building. Anyway I hope you're all doing super duper well as always if you would like to carry on the conversation in the comments down below not telling me how rubbish any of these books are if you felt they were then please do we can have more chats down there. If you'd like more content from me my Instagram and also well all of the links down below including Patreon, wishlist, all those things that I've mentioned earlier and I will see you on Sunday for my December wrap-up. I look forward to it. I hope you do too. I've never said that before. That sounds odd. It sounds a little bit presumptuous, not assumptuous. That's the word that I was struggling with earlier. Anyway, I will speak to you all soon. Bye.